So I'm going to eat this tuna, and I'll see you when I'm done. I want to try to salvage the oil, so I'm just lifting the tuna out. If you get some oil, it's fine. It's vegetable oil in your body. So I'm just kind of squeezing it. Pinch, squeeze. See that? You guys are probably wondering, oh, how can you be hungry? He probably had a big old four pound burrito before he went out there. Honestly, folks, I didn't. I woke up, I got my things together, and I came out. I wanted to give this video the most realistic uh, view as possible and the, and the feelings that I share with you. I want them to be real. I'm going to finish my tuna and I'll see you in a few. I ate all the tuna I could. Now I got to clean my hands with this crappy water. This water's not purified yet, so. I can go back to the rock water source and get more of it. I just want to get some of this oil off of my hands. Whoops. That oil is nasty. And now I got to think about how am I going to get a, a wick on this thing. What am I going to do for a wick? That oil soaks into your hand real nice. <laughs> Feels good. So well folks, for a wick, you know there's a purpose in why I wore this old shirt. I can wash my hands, I can do a lot of things. So I'm going to get to the back of the material back here. We're going to cut us a wick out. Nothing too crazy. Just a small piece. And what the plan is is to run the piece up through this piece here and stick it through that hole. Something like that. See that? That's what I want. Now I want to dip the pointed edge down into the oil because I want to saturate the wick. Once I get the wick good and saturated you see that then I'll flip it over and lay this piece down just like that and this is gonna make an oil candle for us but they do work Dry my hands a little bit. I've got the matches in my pocket. Nice little piece of pitch <laughs> sap. So I'm gonna take when you first when you first go to light these oil candles, they're kind of a pickle. Now I'm gonna readjust that camera angle before I light this. Hopefully you can see this thing. You can see the oil that I had with the tuna. You can see my wick popping through. And when I first light this type of a candle, it takes quite a bit to get the wick going. Once you get it going though, you have a nice candle. 
Oops, that that match went out. Nope, it's lit. That's my oil candle. And that thing will burn for a long time. And it takes it a little bit of time of burning to adjust the wick to the right length. And the simplest way for that wick to get adjusted is just to let it burn. It takes a little bit of time. It's no rush because we're going to be out here for a long time anyways. We're going to be out here all night. If you don't have a t-shirt or you don't have cotton from a t-shirt, you can use something like a McDonald's wrapper, a paper towel, things like that, toilet paper. Those things work really good for wicks. You might notice that my flame went out. That's a simple fix. All we need to do is pull the wick out from the bottom or the top or if it doesn't want to come out just take your knife and pop it through that hole and we need the hole to be slightly larger so I'm going to kind of push from the top down I'm going to try to remove the wick here so I need to widen the mouth of the hole here because if it's too tight this thing will go out you remember when I squeezed it together with a knife? Um, I probably squeezed it a little too much. So I opened it up a little bit. See that? Let's try this again. So we're gonna take the wick again. We're gonna pull off all, all the charred edges. And we're gonna feed it up through there. Right through the hole. See that? What'll happen is with the wider opening we should get a better draw of oil. What will happen with these wicks is if they're too long, they'll burn themselves down to the right depth that they need to be. And anything past that, they'll, they'll stay, I guess what I'm trying to say is they will, they will adjust themselves to the right length. If you get like a really high flame, your wick is probably too long. If you get a real weak, tiny, wimpy flame, your wick is probably too short. In the case of it being too long, it'll fix itself. In the case of it being too short, it'll probably end up going out. So this candle, we're going to let it run for a little bit and see what happens. Hopefully, it'll be able to draw the oil naturally. And uh, these things will burn all night long. That little amount of fuel that comes with that simple can of tuna literally will burn about seven or eight hours. Some cans, you know, you get more uh, oil in them and some you don't, but on the average, I bet you they burn about eight hours. So I'm just going to let this camera watch it for a little bit. See how the flame just just uh, neutralized itself that's what the flame is going to do now it normalized that's what we're going to have we are actually at the step where we are drawing oil up the wick now and you can see we have plenty of oil to, to burn That's all that tuna oil. Pretty crazy. 
I've used juniper bark like this before as a wick. It works pretty good. Cotton works the best. Paper towels and things like that, they work very well. I'm not trying to bore you with this candle. I'm just trying to show you that they'll burn on their own. And how simple it is to make them, you know. That's one of the simplest candles that, that a person could make. And that's why when we were at the store, that's why I wanted to buy tuna that had oil in it. Because this will be my light tonight. I'll have to put it in a place where it's not going to get blown out. You know, I'll have to get some sort of cover around it or some, some sort of protection around it. I don't want to burn up all the oil right here, right now. I'm going to save it for later, for bedtime. I might use it for a little bit of light. So I'm going to blow it out and we'll fire it up later. work over here washing my hands getting the oil off of it look at the oil in my hands it's like lotion or something it's kind of crazy they're really soft right now <laughs> look at that guy out of the water I don't know what it is goes <laughs> no idea what that is I'm adding a little, little water to the fire I've been drinking a lot of water today it looks like we have a nice little stump here first thing I want to do is I want to take all the dry ones out if there's any brown ones they're coming out uh, looks like that's about it So from here, I'm going to strip these pine needles off, off of the branch, if you will. This will all make more sense here in a second. It doesn't, you don't have to have that much uh, pine for bush tea. But I figured since I was out and grabbing it, you know, I'd make sure I had enough. When I make a batch of tea, I generally like to use about, oh, I would say about a tablespoon of pine needles. So I'm going to take them and I'm just going to lay them down. This isn't a very good stump. But it is what it is, folks. The reason I'm cutting them is because to make the tea, we need to be able to access what's inside the pine needles. That's where we're going to get our tea. So I'm just cutting these down a little bit. And I'll pick them up here in a minute. Like I said, I need about anywhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon, depending on how strong you want your tea. If you have access to honey or sugar, that helps make a really nice tea. But unfortunately, in our case, we don't have any of that. So we're going to have more of a natural tasting bush tea. Obviously, you don't want to use the ends of the pine needles too much these parts here. I'm going to throw those out and pick them out 
I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but you just want to try to keep those out if you can. It looks like we have a pretty decent amount, actually. That's honestly about how much we need. Right there. So that's going to be the start of our bush tea.